Hello everyone, my name is Ron Kellowell and today I'm speaking to Denise Brown, a stylist to the stars. And you're going to get some business tips, some ideas, some motivation on how you can be the best that you can possibly be in fashion and actually just in business in general. So thank you for tuning in and enjoy the next interview. Hi Denise, Denise Brown, Stylist of the Stars. Thank Hi. you so much for joining me today. Tell me more about what got you into fashion and who you are, who you really are. Hi, I'm Denise Brown. I'm a freelance fashion stylist and I'm also a fashion tutor. Mm -hmm. And I used to be the fashion designer of Don't Judge Me Clothing. Mm -hmm. and, and what got you into fashion? Um, it started from when I was um, 12 years old. Okay. Um, that's when I discovered fashion. I went to a hip hop rave and um, I made like a hand stitched with, um, and hat, mm. it was made from cardboard and African material and African gown. Because my mum friend used to go to Ghana. Okay, a hip hop yeah. rave, but with African print fashion. I'm like, wait, that was your first kind of. Yeah, my <laughs> first experience, yeah. Because um, I mean, at that time it was like, it's all about Queen Latifah, sort and Pepper. Right, I get it now. And they I were like, Af they had like kind of African inspired yeah, yeah, yeah. material. Yeah. And then that's, that's, and then that actual rave was like one of the biggest raves in Kilburn. Um, oh the God. DJ was Mark, um, it was Mark Ronson. No, not, oh, sorry. I was about Mark, to say. Oh, no, no, I forgot his surname, sorry. That's all right. No, 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 I forgot his surname, but he was like a really big, massive hip hop DJ. And then it was like the time where guys called Dean and Hudson, they were, mm -hmm. they were there at that time as well. So um, there was actually in, um, what's his name? Back to life. Soul to soul. Soul to soul. Yeah. Video. So they yeah. were going to be there. So everyone was like really excited. Oh my so, goodness. So, like, yeah. so music inspired you to get into fashion? Yeah, Is that what you're telling us? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, fashion really, it really started from, because I used to get bullied at school. Okay. So cool. it started to, I, it, I started to get bullied at eight years old from primary Why? school. Yeah, because I had like really kind of tough, coarse hair and my mom couldn't do hair. So she used to always put my hair up in one in a little bobble. Mm. It was like this. And um, because of that, I got terrorized in primary school and it went wow. um, all the way up to secondary school when I was, it, when I was in year one mm -hmm. every day i got terrorized from like boys they used to bully me call me names and because i was really depressed because i used to go home really upset depressed mm -hmm. still want to mm -hmm. tell my mom so that's up then i eventually found fashion mm -hmm. and then i mean the bullying stopped when not, not when i became popular in terms of when i used to start to wear hair weaves and started mm -hmm. to make clothes and then eventually the bullying stopped so fashion kind of gave you that confidence yeah it kind of built your identity yeah. So how did you, lead, you, you, you kind of develop that into a business, into a fashion stylist and designer? Like, um, it's, it's, how did that It's happen? crazy because, um, I mean, when I discovered fashion, I used to make clothes for me and my mates because, I mean, at a really young age, we used mm -hmm. to go raving, mm -hmm. um, bashment. We used to, they used to, it's called bashment now, it's but it's called, ragga. I'm pretty sure. I don't yeah, know it was it. called ragga them days. And then we used to go to like all the big ragga raves. We used to mm -hmm. go to different, like Nasty Love used to play, mm -hmm. Saxon. I was into all that. So we used to go to different areas. We used to go to compete with other girls. Mm -hmm. You know, we were dancing, dancing. You used to dance on your head? Yeah, I used to really, <laughs> all of us used to dance. Moves. Yeah, oh I used to take God. it serious. I, my mom, because my mom's Jamaican, uh -huh. she used to bring back a lot of, dance hall videos so we okay. could practice and see what okay. kind of moves we we're going to do and okay. then we used to go yeah it was be amazing but the really good thing about that is that I was able to I was the one that's in charge so I had to pick like the theme in terms of what we're going to wear so if we're going to make like satin I'll probably wear satin batty riders with the bra top my mate would wear trousers like everyone had their own little unique kind of style it was right. more like a it was, we, was in a, we was in a gang but we was more like it was like more like a group yeah. Then still, how did it come to, so you've, you've touched on the leadership element, so you were kind of the, the boss of the, of the group, yeah. but how did you turn it into a business? What well, happened? Do you know what? I mean, it, it started from, you know, when I was younger, because I used to make clothes for people, yeah. so I had my, 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 my little clientele base, so people used to be you like, to, oh yeah. You sold them? Yeah. I used to make clothes, sell it <laughs> to all these like people from my area, mm -hmm. and to my friends, family, and then um, it, that continued, it stopped when I was, um, how old was I? It kind of stopped when I was, I would say about 16, 17, because that's when I got put, when I was 15, I got put into care. So okay. I was all over the place. So wow. for the past like year or so, I was living in different places. Wow. And um, when I was 16, I got into a hostel. So then I went to Lewisham College and I kind of stopped making clothes for people because I was really depressed. Wow. So I was suffering from depression and I was really stressed at that time. So all of that stopped, but, I kind of like um, decided to, to, you know, go back for it, but I was in my 20s. Wow. Yeah, so throughout all that, you know, I got into a lot of 
I did a lot of criminal activities oh and I was really bad and I was going through a lot of, you know, changes in my life as well. Uh -huh. yeah. Your journey has been something else and yeah. you've survived this to become, I would say, one of the most influential fashion stylists Thank in the you. UK. Potentially the world. We're hoping after this, yes, the world. Yes, I wanted to be the world. So kind of talk, talk us through how you've come from what it sounds like to me, some levels of hardship mm. into the woman you are today, into a businesswoman, a, a fashion stylist. I mean, you've, you've talked about the designing, but what, what did it take for you to really rise above? What did it take? Do you know what? It's crazy because my life was quite hectic in terms of my mum was a drug addict. So by the time I was 14, she became a drug addict. So my she lost gosh. her property wow. and I, I was living the life for years. So I was pretending that everything was okay at home. So because I had like, I was in a gang, we used to go on the streets, we used to terrorise the streets of London, because we were just all angry, because we, all of our mums had like either mental illness, they was on drugs, and we had no dad, because we didn't know our dad. Wow. And um, basically, when I got taken away, uh, I remember getting taken away, I got put into two different homes, and both of their mums were drug addicts. So my life wow. was, it's always been hectic. Never did my, never got any, no GCSEs, I only got one, because, um, yeah, it's got textiles. Mm. So it was just, crazy but when I went I mean what I did I didn't want to stop because I wanted to be the next Versace you know when it's like I want I'm to be Versace it. I'm hearing it. I'm hearing I want to be hunger. Versace so <laughs> I went to like <laughs> not I even a British designer you no, went all I want to be Versace because oh I love Versace because he did that kind of he had this kind of gold you know when they have the yeah, gold everything yeah, was gold yeah, buttons yeah, 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 yeah. and because I was opulent yeah, yeah I was into the gold I was into the bashment scene a lot of you know, us, well, we like to wear big gold earrings. From hip hop, you wear the knuckle duster earrings, which was gold. Everything mm. was like the rings, knuckle duster rings, mm. the sovereigns, everything, the big chains were gold. So I, I loved Versace. So um, I went to Lucian College and eventually I did um, work experience after that for a few years. Mm -hmm. But then I got pregnant with my mm. son and then that kind of held me back. But I still didn't make it hold me back. Then I ended up um, doing work experience for a lady called mm -hmm. Sherry Lamar. Then I applied for London College of Fashion, knowing that I wasn't wow. qualified. I knew I didn't have Love the GCSEs. It. Love but it. I said, you know what, I'm going to try. So yeah, I went into London College of Fashion, had an interview, mainly based because I was the only black at that day. And when the tutor director was talking about the course, I was the only one that asked questions. Wow. And then I got into London College of Fashion. I thought, yes, my life is going to be the best. That's and then huge. it kind of woke me up. It made me realise that I don't think I'm going to be Versace. <laughs> <laughs> um, what happened? Do you know what? It was weird because London College of Fashion is more like a middle class uni college for like people who's got money. Okay. And okay. I wasn't that typical London College of Fashion student. I, had, I was a single mum. I had dramas in my life. I don't, my mum had issues. Mm -hmm. Don't know mm -hmm. my father. Mm -hmm. Everything was hectic. Mm -hmm. So um, I just didn't fit in. In terms of like we had to do like these art exhibitions, mm -hmm. drawings. That wasn't really me because my thing about fashion is that I had it in me. So I used to just sketch and go out there, mm -hmm. make, I didn't really make patterns, but I just used to design, draw, and try and make, and I just made the pattern out of my mm -hmm. head. And mm -hmm. then when I went there, I just didn't feel comfortable in there because there was a bit funny towards like students like myself. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was like, mm -hmm. I was, you know, cause I wasn't like- was You were different. Yeah, you were different. and they were like, oh my God, Denise, it's you. If I knew I was gonna have you last, uh, you know, the one-to-ones, I would have had you first cause you've got so much energy and mm. they didn't used to really push you. And I used to have this design student, I mean, sorry, tutor, I remember her name. Her name is, oh God, she's still a tutor. I'm so upset. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot her name, but she used to say to me, I think you should be a nurse. Oh wow, so she tried to push you into her yeah. kind of way of thinking, like she, what she assumed you should be for her, yeah. yeah, so what she's used to, okay, I'm, I'm kind of... She used to put me down in front of everybody was designed for, oh. because I used to be so quite, even though I was a bit loud and I was out there on roads, in there I felt so in intimidated, I didn't have a voice, so yeah, mm. it was crazy, because you feel like you have to kind of be a certain type of way to fit Conform. in, do you understand, Conform. and like, um, I remember her asking me, oh, Denise, what did you do? Cause we used to, I said, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't do nothing. Because I felt a bit intimidated because everyone was looking at me. I never used to like talking in front of them. And she goes, oh, you should be a nurse. And I thought, what? You're so rude. So it was her judgment. It was okay. What we're getting here is about the judgment. Mm. And it was about that kind of being forced into a corner to conform. Even though, ironically, I would have thought fashion is about non-conformity. It's about expression and mm. being unique and different. But what you're telling me from the journey you've had is people try to judge you and box you in. Yeah. To, 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 what, to their way of thinking, particularly given your background, your race, your gender, mm. that's what they were thinking, right? Yes. So how did you break out of that? So outside of the education system, 
you've managed to work with some of the most amazing celebrities and stars and publications. What, how did you get away from being labeled you know, a nurse or a single mom, somebody who should be a nurse, nothing wrong with being a nurse because I think the nurses yeah, are amazing, yeah. but so, you know, a single mom who came from the bottom, so to speak, to now working at the, you, you know, know, the highest highs of fashion. It was my hunger. I was okay, passionate. Because wow. you know what, I don't know, because when I was younger, I used to have this, this thing in my mind, like, I want to be the best. You know, from when I was young, I was like, I don't want to be like my mom. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like the people around me. Mm -hmm. I want to be successful. And I had that, Love it. I don't care how Say I'm going to get there. Say it again. And you know what, it was, so, it. it was so different. Even though I was like, on one side, I was a criminal. Like, I'm just being honest. I used to mm -hmm. do all sorts of madness. But on the other mm -hmm. side, I had a really great personality. Mm -hmm. So what used to differentiate me is that if I go for a job interview, I'm going to get that job. That's, a per that's the, I used to Your think. mindset. My mind, I'm going to get that job. And I used to always, I've worked in Selfridges, Harvey Nichols, Karen mm -hmm. Millen, French Connection. I, you know, I started to do retail at 15 years old. And every time I work, people used to like me because I'm a people's person. Mm -hmm. And from, from then on, what helped me is because when I used to work for Selfridges, I remember seeing people, oh, what do you, what, you know, when they say, oh, I need something to wear, I'd ask them about, oh, what do you do? And, you know, I, I even used to use my work to network. Networking. Do you understand what I'm saying? It. So it's all about networking. Mm -hmm. And I took risk. So what got me into being a fashion stylist was um, when I was graduating, I got nervous thinking, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And um, I bought a gift box, a silver mm -hmm. gift box with pink tissue paper. And with my final collection, I had did like a five-piece final collection. And then I sent it to Black Hair and Beauty magazine. Mm. And, I, and it was like to the director, the fashion director. So she, so she, oh, she obviously opened it up because she contacted me. Just, I want you to do work experience with wow. me. Because I knew I had to come, I had to think out the box. Do you know wow. what I mean? And that's how I got into fashion styling. So what it comes down to then, it's, it's really down to, to you as an individual. And I think it's a lesson that anybody who's watching mm. really has to come away with is the fact that no matter where you've come from, because you've, you've struggled, you've had bullying in your life, yeah. you've had some parental difficulties, you went into care, mm. you, know, I'm, you know, early single motherhood, right? No, yeah. And a young single motherhood, you've gone through a lot, and you had some, it was dyslexia, right? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I've got oh highly dyslexia. I found it out about three years ago, because I used to have... So you don't even know write. going through education that you no, had, so this was, is it? Yeah, it's wow. crazy, because I never used to could write. So that's the reason why, even the level that I felt like I should have been on, um, I couldn't, because if I went out to an event, I will network, people like, oh my God, we like you, email me. I never used to email them because I didn't know what to say in the email. I didn't know how to express myself by email. So that was always my problem. So, but I found out for about three, four years ago when I did my first year teacher's degree and I got super depressed. And then I went for a test because I couldn't wow. do the course. I couldn't so start it. Despite all of these struggles, you've got to t tell us who you've worked with because this is amazing. Like, mm -hmm. Everything you've said to me right now is really, really proving that point about mindset. Mm -hmm. That no matter where you find yourself in life, as long as you truly believe, and it's got to be, it's got to come from you because yeah. I'm, I'm sure you've had role models and mentors, but it, it really does come down to you. So who have you, who have you managed to work with um, yeah, in spite so of it all? I've, I used to be the fashion editor for RWD and yeah, Touch wow. Magazine and Flavor, and um, I've styled like uh, Kanye, Ti, oh Ed Sheeran, <laughs> Tiny Temper. Dropping um, those names, dropping those names. DJ the names up. You Eliza do little. I've styled like 30 celebrities. <laughs> Over 30 celebrities. Yeah. And I'm, I've, go on, sorry. Oh, I'm, no, no, I'm getting fine, so excited. Fine, I'm and like, I've also worked freelance for other fashion magazines, including like Vogue, Cafe, Fault Magazine, Time Out. So I've worked with different type of magazines as well. How do you do it? What's the secret? Because I'm sure somebody's mm. watching this. They want to be a fashion stylist or a fashion designer or get into fashion. How do you do it? So basically, what I did, I, I started again. When I finished um, London College of Fashion, mm -hmm. fashion design and fashion style are so different. So I decided that I just did work experience. So I did work experience for nearly two years as a stylist. Mm -hmm. And I made her tea. I picked up her rubbish. I took her, <laughs> you know, where she shouted at me every day, her grief. But I had, because I really wanted it so much, I did it. She used to put me down on a day-to-day -day basis. Wow. I used to go home crying. Wow. It was very deep, but I really wanted it. And um, that's what I did. And then after that, I took a risk. And then I um, started to contact magazines. And mm -hmm. I did test shoots. So basically, got like a model, yeah, hair, yeah. makeup, did my test shoots. And then I started to contact magazines. Like, you know, this is my work. Can, yeah, you, can I do? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's how I got into it. But my, the main thing is, 
do work experience because a lot of people nowadays they I mean they can use their blogs and they're like I'm a stylist because they put on clothes on themselves mm. that's not being a stylist that's just being someone yeah you're a blogger but do you know how to dress real people right. you can dress yourself I love that. but can you dress someone who's a size 16 or 18 love that. can you dress love a celebrity that. because we're talking about people with different personalities mm. we're talking about people who's got like a whole team that says yes to them yeah, they got money. So if you say no, no, you're going to get kicked the hell out of their squad. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> wow. So can you deal with these real people? And that's the thing. So um, I always say to people, customer service, even mm. if you do retail, don't worry if you do if you work in H&M, mm. Topshop. It mm. doesn't matter. You're learning mm. how to deal with real people on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. And you're learning how to dress them as well. So mm. that's really important to be a stylist as well, as well as knowing about fashion trends, which everything's accessible. I was about to say, Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's on the internet. You can go into vogue.co.uk, style.com, and you can find out what's in, what's the latest trend. Uh, fashion week, after fashion week, you get to know what the trend is mm. straight away. Mm. Then you can create your own little, you know, your style pages from Polyvore, because the Polyvore mm -hmm. hat's there now. Mm -hmm. So everything's just pretty much there. So it's just all about, you just got to just think about how can you do this and how can you, you know, differentiate yourself. And you've got to do your work. I, I love what you said about, you know, because there's a lot of people who are on social media who mm. kind of label themselves as stylists, but really they are styling themselves. Yeah. And so how do you differentiate these kind of influences who are styling themselves to people like yourself who are really out there doing magazines? How do you, doing magazine shoots, test shoots for big brands, real shoots for big brands, I should say, how do you kind of draw a line because it must be blurred now in this day and age of social media yeah it's it is it's i mean if you want to work because if you want to work for like with magazines you've got to know how to work with themes mm. and that's the problem because a lot of people if you dress yourself you're dressing yourself according to oh this is what the this is what the trend is mm -hmm. the trend and themes are different so mm -hmm. you can pick a fairy tale theme mm -hmm. how are you going to dress that model to make her look like a fairy tale okay. how's it going to you know how's it going to run as a story it has okay. to be from the beginning to an end and you can't have these random looks because I've seen stylists that only do music, right? They only can style their music artists, but they can't do an actual editorial shoot for a magazine, Got which it. I can. So mm -hmm. um, if you, because, um, you know, sometimes it, they might have, a, it's like having a hip hop look, mm -hmm. a streetwear look with a smart look. That's not a story. We're talking about six to eight pages. No, six to 10 pages of fashion. Wow. How can it connect? How can it feel like they're a family? Do wow. you get what I'm saying? So. You really got to be, I mean, if you if you want to be an editorial stylist, you got to also have contacts with fashion PRs. Right. And then you've got to sell yourself to fashion PRs. A lot of bloggers, yeah, they can put on clothes, but they only get the high street, like the boohoos, and maybe they might get the misguided, but River Island. But, you know, when we're talking about high-end, mm. high-end brands will really prefer to have it into magazines that's editorial. Mm -hmm. They don't really care about if a blogger, unless it's like a top, 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 mm -hmm. top blogger, like mm -hmm. Susie Bubble mm -hmm. or Brian Boy, they're wearing their stuff. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so... It's <laughs> <laughs> These names, there's so many influences out yeah, there. Oh my God. Yeah, definitely. So, Denise, with everything you've been through, you've lived the most, uh, I say, the most amazing life in terms of the ups and downs, the, str the, tr the struggles and the triumphs. Talk me through your biggest struggle and your biggest triumph and start with the struggle first and we end with the triumph with the victory. <laughs> okay, the struggle, I mean, the struggles for me really just being, fit, being able to fit in the, into the industry. Okay. You know, because I'm kind of like, um, I'm different, innit? So yeah. when I say I'm different, I was a single mom, had my son young, people could be quite shocked about it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's really my background and just the person that I am. People okay. couldn't really understand it. Like they want to do a shoot and go and have tea and talk about it. That wasn't really my thing. I want to go home and cook my food yeah, yeah, and maybe yeah, just yeah, yeah. watch a great program. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I just wasn't, I just felt like I wasn't a typical stylist in terms of, you know, being judged on a day-to-day -day basis. I remember even doing shoots with people, mm -hmm. like um, a team that I didn't know and they didn't want to talk to me because obviously because I'm black. Mm -hmm. So um, they would just talk, talk, the hair and makeup would talk amongst each other mm -hmm. and with the model. And then eventually, once I put on the outfit, then they, they want to actually talk to me. Because mm -hmm. automatically, what they would do is judge mm -hmm. me by the way I look, thinking okay. that I might put the model in gold grills and, a, you know... Perception you know and stereotypes. What I mean? Yeah, I know and, what you mean. Um, that was like... And that was really been my problem. There's also people trying to block me. I've been blocked quite a lot of times. So mm. even... Do you know what? There's a PR girl that I remember when I was an assistant, she was an assistant to a label. We grew up to... We, we'd done this thing together. We used to see each other and go, hey, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then she got to be the PR manager. So she gave me f just a few like artists at the beginning, smashed it. And then eventually, when it started to get to the big artists, killed it again. And then there was about five times 
she you she made blocked. me get close mm. and said no no reason you she kept blocked. on blocking 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 mm, me mm, so mm. i nearly was gonna call and say why are you trying to block me but i yeah, said yeah, yeah. and then I, and then other people trying to block just me as people well blocking it's you. just it used to hurt me a lot do you mm. know what i mean so that's that's the problem that i kind of had in the industry mm -hmm. just um yeah just not being able to get on a certain level because of my race and you know mm -hmm. so struggling with people's judgments and then struggling with people blocking you and then how do we get to your victory what's your biggest triumph been how did you get to your victory do you know what up to date i think my victory is um i'm trying to think because it's you know there's quite a few my victory is is actually setting up my company you know mm -hmm. fashion changed my life mm -hmm. and it's academy coming mm -hmm. out soon um because i remember working for a company mm -hmm. and um i brought in the fashion elements for them. Mm -hmm. They just did music and media. Mm -hmm. And um, they used my name mm -hmm. to get the kids because I had that mm -hmm. story where they're neat. So the kid's mm -hmm. not in education, mm -hmm. had hard life. Oh, we got Denise Brown here. She started these people. Mm -hmm. She's had a hard life too. You know, so loads of kids came because they wanted to Amazing. see me. Amazing. And then what they did, they had me there. I did the pilot, successful. They mm -hmm. got more funding. Then they turned around and said, oh, we can't use you because you need to be an actual shooter. So they got this other lady and then she was not a great teacher and they had me as an assistant so I remember just leaving that company and I, I said look I'm leaving and they were so unhappy because they thought I was going to be their assistant for, for a long time sure. do you know what I mean got so it, I left the it, company and I, I started my company fashion changed my life a few Excellent. years ago and um yeah it's been a few years but now I'm actually teaching oh, young wow. people adults myself it's my wow. own thing no wow. one ain't telling me nothing wow. so that's been one of the biggest achievements yeah. that I've had and also another achievement is just styling you know when you're styling like a big celebrity like I remember styling Rihanna thinking oh my god is that Rihanna <laughs> as well as being a fan I'm styling yes, her yes. Do you know Doing Kanye, you where all these people I couldn't believe it because it's something that I just can't believe me even Bobby V I did I used to, I used to Bobby V to come to London and wow. I used to go with him everywhere Every single like amazing. destination, MTV, Mobe, all these. Wow! It was amazing. I was like, wow! And I can this see. Me? I can see. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it in you. I can. I can feel it through your spirit that you are doing what you love, mm. and you're doing. You're you're fulfilling your purpose. You know, you're doing something that you're really truly gifted at. You have a or had and have still a successful fashion label called mm. Don't Judge Me, right? Yeah. Um, why is it called Don't Judge Me? Leave our viewers with the reason why people shouldn't judge each other and why it's called Don't Judge Me. Um, just don't judge people for what, where they're coming from and how they've been raised and what position they're in right now. Mm -hmm. Or just people in, on a day-to-day -day basis because the same person that you judge, you don't know where they're going to be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You don't know where they're going to be in the future. I love that. You know, always treat people with respect. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. if someone needs your help if you can help them just try and help them mm -hmm. do you know mm -hmm. what i mean because that same person they might be your employer later exactly. on exactly so that's why i came, that's why i think it's really important not to just judge people amazing. on the day to day amazing and you're proof of that you're yes. proof of wherever you are from the bottom you're at the top and that's right i love it thank you so much thank Jenny. you thank you